think this is the Conservation Commission for the 25th of July, 2024. The Northampton Conservation Commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. Uh, we uh, work with the Wetlands Protection Act and the City Wetlands Ordinance, and our work also includes open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas are published in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings, but we invite public comment. Uh, we ask the public to comment on things that are within the purview of the commission. Uh, today's agenda includes uh, a request for a determination of applicability to determine if roadway resurfacing is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance. Uh, this on routes five and 10, just south of the Hatfield mine. Uh, then a request for determination of applicability to determine if tree removal related to bridge maintenance is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance. Uh, the applicant is the Mass Department of Transportation. Also, as the first uh, hearing will be, at, uh, or an RDA, uh, not a hearing, the first case will be, uh, but this is uh, Coolidge Bridge. Um, there's trees bumping up against the bottom of the bridge and obscuring the ability to uh, uh, monitor and evaluate the bridge. Then uh, request for determination of applicability to determine if uh, utility pole installation is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance. Um, this uh, by our own Beth Spriggs on Reservoir Road. Um, then a request for an order of conditions to be extended. Um, and we're also going to have to uh, elect a chair and a vice chair. Um, so uh, although that's not on the agenda, it, it's an overdue action on the part of the committee. Um, so first items we have, uh, well, let me ask if there are um, uh, any general public comments not having to do with a case that will be before us tonight? Uh, if not, uh, we have uh, three sets of minutes that Sarah sent out. Uh, let me, we can take them as a bundle, can't we, Sarah? We don't sure. have to. Yeah, if anyone individual. has any issues with any of them, you can pull those out. So they were the 22nd of February, the 14th of March, and the 28th of March. Um, and they all looked okay to me. Does someone want to make a motion uh, to approve those minutes? I'll make that motion. Beth, and it's a second. Good. Was that Paul? Yeah, Paul. second by Paul. And uh, any uh, discussion, amendments, modifications, suggestions? Um, I wasn't present at the March 28th meeting, so sh should I be voting on the bundle? You can still you can vote, still if, vote. You're, if you're comfortable. Okay, with they look fine to me. Um, this All is right, my, so we have a motion, motion, second, first, anything else? This is my first meeting as a sworn-in commissioner, so I'll ah. <laughs> since uh, <laughs> Since I, I attended these sessions, but I was not a commissioner at the time. I believe the rules are you could still vote if you want, but uh, I, I don't know that for sure. You, What's you, not, say you so? can, but you you don't don't feel obligated to do so. Oh, okay. Well, I'm comfortable with the with the minutes since I sat in okay. on the meetings. Yeah. All right. Very good. Um, and all in favor, that will require a roll call vote. Sarah, roll call, Jen. <laughs> that was a thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, Melissa? Yes. Beth? Yes. Paul? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? You, unanimous. Thank you. So we'll move to our first case, a request for determination of applicability to determine if roadway resurfacing is subject to the Wetlands Act. Uh, this route and route, uh, the applicant is a DOT. Uh, this on routes 5 and 10, just south of the Hatfield line. Um, who's here to present on that. Everybody, my name is Billy Lee. I'm the district environmental engineer for MassDOT District 2. Um, if it's okay with you all, I have a PowerPoint presentation just to cover all three topics for MassDOT. Um, sure. Can I share my screen? Uh, give me one second. The, the button's moved. Hold on. Where is the... Let's make you a co-host. Okay, great. 
Okay. All right. So just make this full screen for you all. Oops, sorry, I have so many windows open. <laughs> all right. Um just having a second. Okay. There we go. All right. Hello, Northampton Conservation Commission. Um, so today we'll just I'll just be presenting on um, two requests for determination of applicability and one request for extension. Uh, the first one is for roadway resurfacing on Route 5 and 10 in Northampton, just south of the Hatfield border. Um, this is just a map showing where that is. So it's actually right outside of our district office. Um, and the um, project begins at mile marker 25.87. Um, if you guys look in your RDA packet, you can uh, see and on this map as well where that is. Um, the work activities consist of existing pavement uh, being milled and new asphalt uh, being paved on top of the existing road surface. Um, other items will be just the standard um, roadway repairs, uh, such as adjusting any drainage structures but not changing or replacing, uh, pavement markings, replacing uh, just bits and pieces of guardrail that need it, signs, curbing, safety controls, um, erosion sediment controls as needed, but uh, typically they're not used for roadway resurfacing projects because it doesn't generate a lot of sediment. Um, and then milling mulch for shoulders um, and then other minor incidental items. So this is all considered a minor activity. Um, the resource area impacts um, would be considered buffer zone um, of the existing roadway where there is buffer zone. Um, there's also uh, the 200 foot riverfront area, uh, but all work is being uh, conducted to avoid impacts to the resource area. So again, this is all within the existing roadway. It's just proximate to um, buffer zone. So um, like I said, this is considered a minor activity, um, which is 310 CMR 10.022B2, which allows for pavement repair, resurfacing and reclamation of existing roadways within the right-of-way configuration, provided that the roadway and shoulders are not widened, no staging or stockpiling of materials, um, and all disturb disturbed road shoulders are stabilized within 72 hours of completion of the resurfacing or reclamation. Uh, and then, of course, no work to the drainage system other than adjustments and repairs, which I listed, um, and just structures respective to the roadway. So do you guys want to discuss that before I continue the other ones? Uh, yeah, we have to do it in that order. Okay, sounds good. O open meeting law requirements, they said, let, let's take it one step at a time. Yes, of course. Um, so, so any questions from commissioners? Well, just a point of my own ahead, education, um, mass DOT projects are not subject to wetlands ordinance. That's the Northampton ordinance or Mass General Law 131? I'm not sure. The mass DOT projects are not subject to local bylaws or ordinances. Okay, so the they local. Are, they are subject to state law. Yeah, okay. That's what I kind of assumed. I have no Any questions. Any other comments or questions? Seems like it's all happening within the existing right away, and uh, DOT knows the rules about making sure stuff doesn't fall off the sides and all of that sort of stuff. So, uh, uh, someone want to uh, make a motion? Let's see. What I don't have your screen up with your staff reports, uh, Sarah. Which box would we be checking? Uh, so this is one we we don't deal with very often. If the commission agrees that this work is fully exempt, it would be negative determination box five. Box five. I didn't. I, box five is new to me. What, uh, or at least unfamiliar to me. What would? So that indicates that the the work is exempt. Um, so typically, um, applicants don't don't apply if a project is exempt unless there's some other requirement to do so for a you know a federal permit or or something like that. Okay. Um, so someone want to uh, grant uh, or, or uh, uh, determine that. Uh, uh, this will not dredge, fill, or alter. Uh, there's no damage being done and uh, meets the uh, uh, state requirements and therefore um, can uh, proceed. Uh, someone want to make a motion to that effect? I'll move. And a second? I'll second it. 
Any further discussion? If not, uh, all in favor, Sarah? All roll right, call. so roll call vote on that. Jen? Yes, I figured it out this time. <laughs> uh, Melissa? Uh, muted. Sorry, yes. Uh, Beth? Yes. Paul? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Wow, unanimous, thank you. So um, now we can move on to the uh, Coolidge Bridge work. Okay, great. I will reshare again. Just give me a moment. All right. Uh, oh, the Zoom thing keeps getting in my way. Sorry. All right. All right, so Coolidge Bridge tree work. Um, so the proposed work is tree trimming for removal, sorry, tree trimming and removal needed to facilitate bridge inspections, which are required by Federal Highway Administration. Um, this map shows the trees and the different species in the key in the top left corner. So we're proposing removing up to 19 trees and trimming two of the larger trees. Um, we would clear brush along the access route in that yellow hatched um, rectangle. And the equipment used would be a tree truck, hand tools, and a masticator. And the chips would be spread outside of the buffer zone um, or hauled off site. So um, as you can see from this photo, we're pretty close to um, the Connecticut River. So we'll be within the 100 foot buffer zone and the 200 foot riverfront area. Two of the trees which are proposed for removal are at the top of bank um, along the Connecticut River, but there's no disturbance to the bank that is proposed and those stumps will be left in place. Um, so this is uh, somewhat considered a minor activity under 310 CMR 10 b 2 b 2 So some of the activities described here are vista pruning, um, provided the activity is located more than 50 feet from the mean annual high water line within a riverfront area from bordering vegetated wetland, uh, whichever is further, and activities that are temporary in nature have negligible impacts and are necessary for planning and design purposes. So I wouldn't say this really fits under either of those, but as I stated, these are all trees that need to be removed in order to inspect the bridge for bridge safety. Um, a lot of those trees are actually growing underneath the bridge, so eventually um, would have to be removed in order for the bridge to be safe and functioning. Um, and then just a couple more um, exemptions about vegetation cutting for roadway safety maintenance. Um, again, it doesn't clearly define this under these, but um, figured this would be good evidence as to why it would be considered minor. So any questions on that? I can also pull up this um, diagram that just shows the tree species, if anybody wants to look at that a little bit more. Right, that was part of your package. Um, yes. The, uh, Sarah, you had expressed some uh, concern about whether th there was in fact an endangered species that would could possibly be put at risk. Uh, so this area is within priority habitat, but the review of that isn't part of the wetlands review process. So I was just noting that it, it might need to. Yes, right. and we're yeah. going through that process with the natural heritage yeah. program, um, just separate from this. And is it and, correct um, that you're going to leave the stumps? Yes, that is correct. And replanting or uh, what? What's because it's I haven't been down there recently, but that's fairly no, because involved. we don't want more trees growing in this area, yeah. But, but the, you, nor do you want barren soil. So, uh, I was because my, my vague memory when I have put in canoes down, um, around the bridge is that it is, uh, it, it, it's a lot. Once you take the overstory away, it's going to be a lot of dirt. Um, and I'm wondering about erosion and what the intent is to uh, uh, repopulate that area with maybe things that won't grow as tall as the bridge, but at least would hold soil and, and create some, um, uh, replicate some of the natural environment. Yeah, so I think um, underneath the bridge ab abutment, there's a lot of sand there just because there's not a lot of light getting there. So I don't think a lot of vegetation is going to take. I also think a lot of that is... Um, 
just sort of stand over top of the concrete bridge abutment. Um, I I would say we could seed in that area if that was a concern for the Conservation Commission. Um, but it's a natural floodplain area, so I don't really. Um, I think what's growing out there. Sorry, we're just planning on removing trees that are going right along the abutment and need to be cleared. Um, you know, so that they're not. Instead of carting the wood chips away, could they be sprayed on the bare spots without, you know, at risk of being washed downstream? Yeah, that is certainly something that um, we can do. We we typically don't propose that because some commissions find that to be fill in a resource area, but we can absolutely spread them on site. This is just not something I'm familiar with. Can, can you explain why the trees couldn't be trimmed out of the way, out of the sight lines, or why they need to be fully removed? Yeah, so, I mean, what we're doing is cutting them down to the stumps. We're not, like, pulling the trees out of the soil. Um, but the idea is that, you know, there's a, there are a lot of bridges to maintain. There isn't um, constant funds to trim the trees so you know these are trees that are growing underneath the bridge and ultimately need to be removed um so it would just be a matter of like going out and constantly trimming them rather than just cutting them down because they're in an area where they really can't be growing um one question i had was um this is a, a kind of restricted area that you're looking at where there's growth and there's other growth in that immediate vicinity. Uh, do you foresee needing to trim back or cut out further trees and shrubs? Um, in the future, yes. Anything that uh, grows underneath the bridge and along the bridge that's affecting the ability for the inspectors to inspect the bridge because basically what they have is, it's a truck that parks on the bridge and it has a long arm that goes under it so that somebody can inspect the safety of the bridge. So um, yeah, yeah, there will be, I mean, hopefully the idea of doing a foul swoop of cutting 19 trees is that we won't have to come back next year. Um, but eventually when trees start to grow in, they will have to be cut too. So um, the aerial view that you showed on your second slide, I think there was other growth mm -hmm. um, outside of that window, that demarcation that you had. Um, here, let me share my screen. I'm not sure. Two. Okay. Um, so these are all trees that are growing along, right? So it's, it's trees. So number nine, you can see, looks like it's in the roadway. It's directly underneath the bridge, but all of these trees, while they're little dots on this map have much bigger canopies and those are impacting the safety of the bridge. So if there's like a big storm and one of those trees falls down onto the bridge, that would be a really big safety issue. Um, and then in order for the inspectors to be able to inspect the bridge, there needs to be like clearing of those branches along the bridge. So um, where you see a little dot, just imagine a much bigger tree canopy. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah I understand that, thanks. Uh, but what I see is where you have the access road, the hatch mm -hmm. works. Uh, to the yes. left of that, there's a lot of growth. Are you foreseeing? Yeah, they're, we're, do, we're proposing those? brush clearing in that area, um, mainly for access so that they can get machines in there to take the trees down. Um, there's also been a lot of dumping by nearby neighbors, so it's a safety and visibility issue in that location as well. Yeah, I thanks. I understand that, but what I'm asking about is the actual tree growth to the left of that. Um, there's a space between from the left of that up to the bridge that's yep. not in your clear area, clearing area. Uh, are you planning on clearing there as well? Well, we've gone out and done a survey of which trees are hazardous to the bridge and there were not identified in that area. So those trees that Melissa is referring to, which are down sort of the lower left-hand uh, section of your photo, those mm -hmm. are not tall enough to be bothersome at this point? No, no, they weren't identified to be a problem but could become a problem. Right, at a future time. So yeah, I'm imagining I'm further further out where the bridge goes over Elwell Island, Those some of those trees are pretty close to the bottom of the bridge as well. But I suppose you'll come back at a future time about those. 
Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. So, so what I'm thinking about is kind of a, a, a broader site analysis and thinking about long term, as as you're saying, long term maintenance. And if the trees are growing below the bridge now, clearly vegetation can grow below the bridge. Uh, so we could uh, consider uh, the idea of replacement vegetation that would be low growing, that would stabilize the bank and wouldn't be a problem in the future. Is that does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I guess my question would be under what regulatory um, provision would that be required? That's that's a good question. That's probably where I'm, I'm a relative newbie here. So uh, uh, I would defer to colleagues to. Well, yeah. we, I, I, so the application is requesting that the commission find that there there's no alteration to the riverfront area that the project doesn't remove dredge fill or alter so if they find that it does um but potentially could find that it, it doesn't you know, if lower growth vegetation were installed then, then that could be an option an option but not required well i think we could we could require um, uh, as, as uh, Billy said, we want to see some seeding or other uh, generation of relatively low growth soil stabilizing uh, yeah. foliage that then uh, that's something that we could say, yep, you, uh, if that happens, then there will not be dredge fill or alter uh, disturbance to the protected area. So um, that would be a condition that we uh, would want to apply at least for me and it sounds like Melissa is probably in a similar vein uh, and I haven't been down there in a couple of years well probably more like five uh, so I, I can't say for sure I don't know Sarah did you do a site visit for this um, and is there a lot of barren soil and would it be useful to have it stabilized by some low growth yeah, I, d I did go check it out. You know, it's an area that has been really, it looks like really impacted by flooding. There's a lot of uh, human use down there, despite the no trespassing signs. So there, there's really not any ground cover in some of the areas where the trees are proposed to be removed. And is it flooding uh, uh, frequently enough that it would be difficult to establish uh, low growth? Um, hard to say. There are areas, you know, and it, it about equal elevation on the floodplain where it looks like there there is some vegetation established. So it might be a combination of factors, you know, the, the bridge and the low levels of light, um, human tramping with soil. Um, but it could it definitely could be an option. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be inclined to at least want to give it a try. I don't know what the other commissioners think, but it uh, seems like if we're taking down um, 19, some fairly substantial uh, trees that would be nice to put something else in there. There's going to be a lot more light available um, and it seems likely that something will grow and we ought to give it a chance. So that would be my inclination. Um, say that if that were to happen, then I could probably find, then I could find uh, that it will not damage uh, uh, a protected zone. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can see that. Any further comments or discussion or questions? Yes, the only thing I would add is that, you know, there there doubtless are, uh, whether they're native or not, um, things that grow in low, relatively low light, uh, that grow on compacted soil that uh, withstand flooding. So uh, uh, perhaps some of that could be researched to uh, propose specific species that would be there. Just a suggestion. That could be... Uh... Well, we often do, Melissa, for that kind of thing, is suggest to the applicant um, that they propose uh, prior to the beginning of work uh, to Sarah uh, for approval. Uh, yep, that looks like it'll fit the bill. So uh, that was something we could add in this case. Okay, thanks. I'll just explain to Billy that I'm, I'm new here, Billy, so I'm, I'm learning as I go. So some of this, I'm, 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 I'm trying to build a foundation uh, to strengthen my, my, my background as I go for, for future meetings. Absolutely. Could be something just as simple as a conservation mix. Yeah. Shrubs, shrub seeds, so on. Yeah, Sarah, I will mention the only thing that I would be concerned about with the seed mix is that there are rare plants out there. So I don't know how 
natural heritage would feel like what their opinion on that would be. Sure. And that makes sense. I mean, if it's not a full ground cover, I mean, maybe just some like targeted joint plantings just to make sure that it's not completely bare soil, which it, it, it might be in a few locations. So mm -hmm. maybe even check informally with natural heritage to see what they might recommend. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. That sounds good. Um, so uh, now I once again don't have which box to check, but this was a is this more standard box two? Will not so, put dredge yeah, fill so this is river fraud, so it would be a negative two with the condition discussed for uh, okay. a with, the, with that condition added, uh, they at least research and propose and see what can be planted to minimize our future erosion. Then with that, we could say that it does not damage a protected area and therefore could have a negative determination and check box two. Someone want to make a motion to that effect? I'll, I'll move. I'll move motion that. Paul, second. I'll second. Second by Beth. Um, any further discussion? If not, all in favor. Sarah. All right. Roll call vote. Jen? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Beth? Yes. Paul? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right. Unanimous. Um, and we do have one more RDA, but since Billy is is here, we could skip to the um, request for okay. extension. Okay. I'm on mute. <laughs> um, so for the last one, I, I don't really have um, many slides or maps. Um, this is just a extension for the existing DEP file number 2460741, which is the I-91 bridge replacement. Um, this project had an order of conditions that was originally issued in 2020. Um, because of uh, permit tolling during the state of emergency, that was something that you sent me, Sarah, um, the the permit was extended to 8-12-2024, so August 12th of this year. Um, Sarah, I sent you that one administrative change to the access road in April of this year, and then we made the request uh, before 30 days of the expiration of the existing order of conditions. Um, that project is anticipated to be completed uh, December of this year, so we're just looking for that extra coverage um, so that we're not operating um, without a permit for a couple months. So a one-year extension uh, as opposed to our, our usual three-year extension? Billy, is that what the request yeah, is? Yeah, I mean, either way, I don't know if it's more complicated to do that or not. I think if they typically just renew it for three years, but I'm not exactly sure. But we don't need it for all three years. Okay, understood. Yep. So uh, someone want to make a motion to grant an extension to that existing order of condition? Well, let me see first. Other questions or uh, comments from commissioners? If not, someone want to make a motion to grant an extension of an order of condition? Um, I'd, I'd suggest a, a year. I don't think it has to be three. Uh, that's just usually the maximum that we uh, grant. So a one year uh, extension, someone want to make a motion to that effect? So moved. By Mason and a second. I'll second. Second by Beth. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Okay. Sarah? Uh, roll call for a one year extension. Jen? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Uh, Beth? Yes. Paul? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Okay, unanimous. And now uh, we're uh, having a, a, uh, an application from a commissioner, which is a rare event, but it has happened in the past before. Um, so a request for determination of applicability to determine if utility pole installation is subject to the Wetlands Act or Wetlands Ordinance. Uh, we've seen the application, but Beth, what, 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 what can you add? Um. Well, I'll just add, so this is for an electrical upgrade to, to our house and the utility company won't, put, they need another pole because the span that exists is too far. So they need to put in a pole between our house and then the other pole, which is on the other side of the stream. Um, and the pole placement is somewhat constrained by the fact that the 
where it needs to go is actually an easement to the city to for dam maintenance for the Roberts Meadow Dam. And so it has to be on either side of this so that they could still get a truck in. So the one location for the pole is on the, is on the side of the stream or the spillway, and the other is right underneath a tree that would require significant pruning. So the, the request is for the pole placement that's on the side of the spillway. So, yeah, that's sort of the background there. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions or comments from commissioners? Sounds like that's the only exact spot it can go. I, I mean, it would be, I think it would be really disappointing to prune the other tree because it's the biggest tree in that whole area. So it would, you know, I, I, it, there aren't a lot of options. Yeah. So the utility company was pretty specific about where they wanted it. And we talked to the city engineer and so. There would likely be additional pruning in the future too, if it's near the, near the tree, I, I would assume. Mm -hmm. And the I, side I, of oh sorry, go ahead, Jen. Just the bank of that spillway is fairly manufactured. Am I right in remembering that there? Like, it's not a natural stream bank. I know that doesn't change the resource area, but yeah, Sarah, you know the his more about the history of it than I do. I did, do you know what it is? Uh so the the, the spillway portion of it. Yeah, like the yeah. bank. Yeah, so this was uh, recently, I think within the past five years, uh, part of a restoration project uh, that was funded by FEMA. So it, there, it, there, there's really not any other place to put the pole. It didn't seem like it. Yeah, it sounds like. <laughs> um, and were it just a little farther away, which there was no flexibility to do, it would have been completely exempt as one of the things anyway, right. we've discussed before. So given all that, uh, um, I, I realize I've been not paying attention to, there are other people on the call and I haven't always had my full screen up so I haven't noticed them, but I've been neglecting to say after I ask whether there's questions or comments from commissioners, whether there's questions or comments from the public. So this time I'll remember. Uh, so first, are there any more comments or questions from commissioners on this case? If not, are there any comments or questions from members of the public? Now, if not, um, someone uh, uh, want to make a motion to issue a negative determination? Um, and this would be a, our sort of standard box two. Um, won't do any damage. So moved. By Paul. And the second? I'll second. Oops. Melissa. And uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor, Sarah. All right. Um, roll call vote, Melissa? Yes. Jen? I think she's gone. Yeah, oh, Jen, she sent me a message that she was unexpectedly in her car and didn't have her charger, so she might I see. Okay. Off. Um, Paul? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Right. Unanimous. Thank you. So that's uh, the cases we have before us. Um, uh, including the, uh, uh, extension of the order of conditions. Uh, the only other thing Sarah and I had talked about that, uh, we haven't had an election in a while, um, uh, and so, we're supposed to. Uh, Kevin, I, the, the published agenda, um, did include the election of chair and vice chair. Oh, it did. Yeah, it did. Just... As well as where did it go? I must have just as... printed out an old copy. Yeah, I had, um, we had a couple last minute additions. So there was chair and vice chair, um, designate representative to community preservation committee, and then amend the conservation area land use regulations. Right. So those are the the the, the three other items. Um, and then, then and... I have a couple other business things. But th oh, those good. were officially listed on the agenda. So I am. Uh... I, I've been chair for, I don't know, 12 years, 14 years, something like that. And um, I'm happy not to be, uh, but uh, I'm willing to continue to be. So uh, first question is, is anybody else interested in nominating another commissioner or self-nominating uh, to have that role? 
hadn't even thought about it. And they're done that. <laughs> yeah, Mason once was. That's true. Um, <laughs> and uh, so we vote separately for chair and vice chair, Sarah. Yeah, I think that that would make most sense. All right. Well, I I am uh, happy to continue to serve. Do we need to reelect re annually? We we just haven't done it in a while. But I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, it is. It's supposed to be an annual activity. Um, it sometimes it slips through the cracks. So it, the first meeting of the fiscal year seems like a good time to reinvigorate. Mason, you're so, the vice chair. Well, that's the separate vote. But so far, Mason has been the vice chair. Yes. Okay. Here are the vices. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so someone want to make a motion, um, uh, I think to elect me as uh, chair for another year. I'll make that motion. You do a fantastic job, Kevin. Thanks. We appreciate yeah. it. And I would second that. Born to be Happy pressed. to do it. Happy to do it. I've, I've, I've stopped being on a couple of the hospital board and, uh, tapestry board and a couple of other things. So this is the one that I'm happy to stay with. So great. But, uh, close, near and dear to my heart. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad to continue for at least a while. I turned 76 day before yesterday. So I don't know how oh, much boy. longer, but um, <laughs> it, uh, it'll, I, I, uh, I will do it at least for another year. So uh, it's made and seconded. Is there a vote all in favor? Sarah, you need a roll call for that? Yes, roll call vote, Melissa? Yes. Beth? Yes. Paul? Yes. Mason? Yep. And Kevin? Yes. Um, I can vote for myself, so I did. But <laughs> now I will I will nominate Mason as, as vice chair, unless, um, uh, and I assume, Mason, this is okay with you, because, May, and we all know Mason's been going on a half a century here as a member of the yeah. Conservation Commission, so. Uh, Up there. <laughs> it's a uh, an extraordinary um, uh, history of, of of service on this committee. So I assume you're willing to serve for, as vice chair for another year. But I didn't. Uh, is that true? Uh, yes, you're willing. Sure. Yep. Great. Okay. Unless someone else wants to. Uh... So I will nominate Mason to serve as vice chair. Is, are there any other nominations from the floor? If not, is there a second for my nomination? I'll second. And with made and seconded, uh, so we need a vote. Sarah? All right, so roll call vote for vice chair. Melissa? Yes. Beth? Yes. Paul? Yes. Kevin? Yes. And Mason? Or why not? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, and now we've got uh, a change that is generic in some ways, but it really has a targeted purpose. Uh, that beach just by uh, the new boathouse, um, yeah. uh, by the old lane construction site, um, has gotten really built up over the years by uh, sand getting washed downstream and has become a hotspot. Uh, Sarah sent out um, how, in, and on online um, yeah. invitations, show up here, come, it's gonna be a great party. And uh, it is in fact, a uh, part of the Greenway and Sarah sent pictures of the trash that's accumulated. So while this is a, a generic rule that I think we can apply throughout the Connecticut River Greenway, it really has a targeted purpose at this point. Right. Anything else you wanna say about that, Sarah? So, um... I don't know if anyone saw the email that I sent out today um, yeah. that the, the area is fully closed this weekend, at least this weekend, probably a little bit longer. Um, yes. But the city has had some really pretty severe issues with, with overuse, um, extraordinary amounts of trash, fights, people selling alcohol, drinking alcohol, glass bottles, like just, just motorized vehicles, boats pulling up, all, all sorts of issues. Um, so the, the police department and the health department um, have initiated an, an emergency closure. Um, you know, people are you know, relieving themselves in the woods. So there's public health issues um, and other things going on. There are other parts of the Connecticut River Greenway that don't have a problem. But because this is a, such a remote area, so difficult for the police to get to, 
um, you know, even from the land side, it, it's tough to get to. It's tough to get to in a car. You have to go past River Run um, and, and pull up into the boathouse area. Um, can be a little tough to get to in a boat because of the, the shallows and the currents in that area. So not really able to be patrolled effectively by the environmental police. Um, but you know, we just wanted to clarify the the rules and regulations, maybe in a a non quite such an emergency situation, to make it clear that this can be closed um, temporarily to address specific abuse or overcapacity issues, and then also prohibit glass bottles, grills, and stoves of any kind. A lot of the trash that we're seeing left behind is is related to grilling. Um, so I I'm happy to talk more about the issue or yeah. or or the specific regulations that are Sarah, how does it get cleaned oh, up? Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, how does it get cleaned up? Um so there there have been some really dedicated volunteers who have taken it upon themselves to take the trash out of there. Um although all city conservation areas are carry in, carry out, the trash here was so severe uh, the TPW ordered a dumpster. But because it's so difficult to get to the area, people aren't taking their trash to the dumpster. They're just leaving it on the beach. Um, so some of the community rowing folks have um, ferried over the trash. Uh, other people have carried it out. But it, it's a it's a long slog, especially with a lot of trash um, or dirty trash. It's it's tough to carry out other people's stuff. Um, you, you really have to know how to get in there. Um, there used to be signs saying beach. You know, it, it's not a beach and we don't want people swimming there. It's, it's really not a safe area. So those were taken down. Um, there, there's no there's no porta potty. So uh... There's not, no, um, you know, it, because it's not a beach, it, it's not intended to be a beach. It's a, you know, we're happy to open it up for people who are, are just hanging out. Like there's before the swimming season, people go there and sit, read books, you know, look at the, look at the river. It's a great place to see eagles. It's a really cool spot. Um, but when it gets really hot, the overuse issues start. And I've been by there a couple of times each of the past few years with a friend who has a boat, I no longer have a boat um, on the river, but the uh, uh, the number of people sometimes is, I think, well over 100 um, on oh, that beach. Goodness. And with a dozen, 15, sometimes more, uh, boats pulled up to the beach um, and uh, music blasting and uh, people obviously intoxicated. And a lot of these people are driving boats that they shouldn't they, they they don't know what they're doing they just um and you know and and so anyway it's a uh, and some people really don't know how to swim um uh, this uh, the friend we go on this boat with and my wife were out uh, uh late last year in the summer and they rescued a person who was uh, a, a young woman who was you know totally made up with uh, uh trying to look great and in a bikini and on a plastic uh, tube that uh, she couldn't get back to land with and was getting washed downstream and waving her arms and, and was nearly exhausted by the time uh, Sally and Judith pulled her out of the water. So it really is uh, a, a place where bad things are waiting to happen if, if this kind of pattern continues. Yeah, and so this image is something that was pulled off of social media oh. um, for a, an advertisement for a, a party this Saturday. And this image, I believe, is from last year, but which shows the, the types of uses that have been going on. So uh, someone want to make a, a motion to approve the language that Sarah put in red on the land use um, uh, policy. I'll make the motion. And a second. Second. And any discussion, amendments? Anybody want to add anything or uh, change any of the language? I think it's probably a, a, a good, solid place to start because it gives us the ability to say, yep, um, the authorities are empowered to do this officially. Mm -hmm. Any problem going on with Elwell's Island, too? Uh, Elwell Island hasn't been quite as much of an issue. Um, there had been some people for a, for a while pulling up to the other side of it, but I I think 
that's sort of been dispensed with mostly in favor of this area and, and Rainbow Beach. So that I don't know if there's there's changing currents that they were actually cutting down trees to make uh, you know plastic shelters out of or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um so I, I'm just highlighting the the changes here, but this is you know mostly um, taking the language from the Leeds Mill River Greenway regulations. Um, and although this provided the um, the ability for the director of planning sustainability to close that area if needed, that never had to happen. Um, you know, so th this is this is pretty unique. This is something that the city takes really seriously and and is really a you know a, a last resort type of effort. We don't ever want to shut off public use to a conservation area. Is there a threshold? for how much abuse will be tolerated until we um, say no more? Uh, I would imagine that this closure will probably last until the end of this summer season. Okay. Um, you know, we're, we're working to try and figure out how to deal with this area. Um, when, when this large beach didn't exist, we envisioned, you know, creating some even accessible pathways to the, you know, to the shore so that people could go there and visit. But now that it's, it's really becoming just a magnet for it. Problems. How is this enforced? Yes. The, um, the the closure will be enforced by the police department at least this weekend, um, and then they'll they'll see what happens after that. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. So we have a a, a motion uh, made, and I think seconded, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, Beth, and oh. then seconded by Nathan. Okay. So uh, all in favor, Sarah. All right. Roll call vote, Melissa. Yes. Beth? Yes. Paul? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Very unanimous. And now we have uh, uh, Jen Hedbin, the uh, representative of the Commission to Community Preservation Committee. Uh, and then her life got busy enough that, uh, uh, and, and I rotated off one of the boards I was on. So I had some more time. So this last cycle, I served in that role and it's uh it's actually interesting and enjoyable uh, can be fairly time consuming but in chunks um we do site visits and you see what the various applicants are proposing and go th through some of the applications are fairly lengthy um but it's also pretty gratifying because you get to give away money uh, and say yeah here go ahead do that thing <laughs> um, so uh if anybody else is interested uh, it's a fine thing to do. If not, I'll I'll do another year. But it uh, it it is a fine thing. So I wanted to open that up. I'm 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 willing to, but not um, committed to saying okay. This ought to be me because it's something that we can rotate among member members. You know, I might consider it a year from from now. Okay, good. Been there, done that. <laughs> I was actually on the committee to come up with that that committee. Yeah, cool, foundational. We had yeah. uh, we had a godly amount of money to spend because <laughs> we at the time we got the most you could get the most percentage of the tax returns, I guess. Yeah, state and, share. Uh, well, the st state matches it. So, uh, and at the yeah. time, it used to match a hundred percent. I think. Uh, so. Yeah, th at that time, you know, we were fairly new, and they matched everything, and we had like over three million dollars in projects. It was incredible. Yeah, I think this year we had one point seven. Sarah, is that right? Something was, like that. Uh, I think two point four, including the state match. Um, well, that's good. State match so this both, year was. I'm, I'm thinking, thinking just. The the first round yeah. was 1.7, right? Yeah, I think the, the state match is down to about 28%. When oh. Boston and Worcester adopted the CPA, that was a oh. big hit to the match of other communities. Right. The money never gets beyond Worcester. Yes, that's right. It's like the Colorado River drying up. <laughs> yeah. Kevin, does the commission, uh, I mean, the CPA track the... Um, how evenly distributed gets funded through the three different domains? Yes. Uh, we There's some that is uh, <clears throat> earmarked, first of all, so that you can't disproportionately, you can't give nothing to one of the categories. Um, yeah. You have to put some aside for each of the categories. So, and then, yes, there is a lot of discussion within the 
uh, com committee about, uh, well, where should the priority be? Because we this is the first year where we really didn't have enough money uh, by a lot. We got requests for like more than double, maybe triple the amount of money we had. So, um, wow. Yeah. Thanks. So it, um, it's pretty even at the moment. You know, it fluctuates, yeah. uh, especially with larger projects, like um, a substantial housing proposal could be a half a million dollar or more request. So, so that will change um, over time or, you know, a large recreation project or a big open space rec um, acquisition. Like when Florence Fields was developed, the, you know, that, that substantially changed the, the ratios, but it's pretty close to 25% for each program yeah. area at this yeah. point. Okay. So do we need a vote on, uh, so Paul, maybe next year and anybody else want to do this year? If not, I'll stay around for uh, this, this cycle. Brian does a nice job. Brian Adams is a good uh, yeah. a good chair for CPC. Yeah. All right. So, uh, is there a motion to elect me as the representative of the committee commission to the committee uh, community preservation committee? So moved. And a I'll second. Second. And roll call vote, Sarah. Uh, Melissa. Yes. Beth. Yes. Paul? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right, unanimous. And um, Sarah, you said you had a couple of other yeah. things. So a couple other items. I see Angie Gregory is here. So if she has stuck around, she can talk about her bridge project. But um, back in March, the commission had a request for certificate of compliance for a bridge replacement project on Haydenville Road. Um, I went out and did a site visit and there were more, uh, there was more riprap than had initially been permitted, including a brand new um, alteration to land underwater, which the commission just didn't see a way to permit at that point. And these pictures don't really actually show that much, I'm realizing, but um, I, I did go out and do another site visit and the, the Gregory's had removed that that additional stone that, that wasn't part of the permitted Process. footprint. Is it by the golf course? Yeah, so this is the, the last lot in in uh, Northampton before you get to Haydenville on the right uh, across from the National Grid headquarters. Oh, okay. And they had, I remember the application, they had to figure out how to do all of this uh, repair and rebuild on the bridge uh, from the road. Uh, so they wander was... right way up to the bird guy's house. Well, I don't know who's but yes, it is a long driveway. Yeah, he's not there anymore, but the house sits way up on the hill. Right. Yeah, it's so what's his re revegetating sense, uh, nicely. It looks great. You could drive an oil truck over a fire truck, whatever, whatever hmm. type of heavy machinery you might need to. Nice. So what action do should come from us? Uh, so move to issue a certificate of compliance for the work. Okay. So I want to make a motion to grant a certificate of compliance. So moved. A second. A second. Yep. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, Sarah. All right, roll call vote. Melissa? Yes. Beth? Yes. Paul? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? All right, unanimous. Um, and then other items. Uh, after consultation with Kevin, we felt that it was appropriate to issue an emergency cert certificate for a beaver deceiver at Pine Grove. Um, mm -hmm. So th this is the golf course that the Conservation Commission uh, acquired about four years ago. We are working to restore wetlands there um, and eventually to take the dam down. Um, but the beavers have received our invitation a little prematurely and we're doing <laughs> their very best to dam up the inlet at the former irrigation pond. And because the um, the spillway was essentially homemade um, and is completely dirt, you know, every every time the beavers put their 
there's not a lot of woody material in the stream because it's not in great ecological I condition. Like mud. But, you know, they were rocks and golf balls and just yeah. whatever the mud, whatever they could find. Uh, so the, the spillway would get overtopped and there was a real concern that we would lose the dam, which we didn't want. Although we want the dam to disappear. Eventually, uh, when, right. when we want it to, yeah, we don't yes. want it to disappear in an uncontrolled fashion and send all of the riprap and all of the silt downstream where we're hoping to restore the channel. So we spent a little bit of money um, to uh, have Mike Callahan install a beaver deceiver, basically just to bring the level down to where it should be. And then we can reuse the beaver deceiver materials after that. <laughs> Do we need to take any action or is this informational? No, that, that's informational. Can you explain to me what beaver deceiver Ah. <laughs> oh yeah. So, uh, I can. I'll send you a, everybody a fact sheet after the meeting. Okay. That'd be but, great. Uh, a beaver. So beavers don't like the sound of rushing water. They want to plug it all up. You know, they okay. they want to create habitat and food for themselves. They want to create flooding as much as possible. Which at Pine Grove will eventually be great. You know, we want okay. to restore these wetland areas. We want to bring the course back to what it used to look like before it was a golf course. Um, but. Um, since we don't want them to do that. Now, the, the beaver deceivers create the sound of moving water in a place where if the beavers do dam it up, it won't have any impact. So they're basically damming up something artificial. And the, the, real, the real outlet for the water is farther away that they can't get to. I see. I see. Thanks. It's redirecting obsessive compulsive uh, disorder <laughs> behavior. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, the clinician, with a fever diagnosis. Um, so, it, 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 and did we use the guy whose company is Beaver Deceiver International? That same guy. It may. I think the company's changed Street? names a couple of times, but it's um, Beaver Solutions is the name of it. Uh, Beaver Solutions. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Beaver frustrations. Good. So that's informational. And what else? before we uh, close the meeting. I, I think that's it. Our next um, meeting? This point. Oh, so uh, the last meeting in August still worked be best for everybody. Uh, so it will be August 29th. No, no date was perfect, but that one seemed to be the yeah. best. Is there anyone who okay. didn't respond to the poll who definitely won't be able to make the 29th? I didn't respond, but I'll make it. Okay, very good. And, um, and, and I will be following up about site visits in between now and then. Uh, for those of a few of you went out and visited the View Avenue site. Uh, that's an important one to see if you haven't. Um, okay. Mount Tom Road and their solar project will be on, likely be on the agenda again. And there's a couple are, others as well. So I'll I'll be sending out information. Are we a full, full membership now? Yes, we have a full complement of seven. I was wondering who, who left. Um, I see Melissa's on here, but I don't know who's gone. Is, is Randy still on? Or? He is no. not. So Randy got really busy with the Iron Horse, which is with an admirable. Oh, that's right, too. But David. Yeah, David, David couldn't make it tonight. He's doing. But he's still a commissioner. So. Yeah. Yeah. David is. And I see Angie Gregory, who I do not know, but I assume you have something you want to say. It's Angie's bridge. No, I just want yeah, it was the bridge. And I just I just wanted to thank you all for um taking the time to kind of close that project. It's something that we opened in our mind in 2020, and it's it's really nice to have it really done. Oh, good. So good. Yeah. 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 Yep. So thank you. And then I guess I'm just kind of curious what what happens next. There's some sort of a certificate. I don't know when or how that comes or yeah so I'll, I'll email that to you next week um either you you can print it out and bring it to the registry to record or if you have an attorney who's dealing with that stuff they can deal with it electronically okay so we have to bring that to the registry of deeds yep okay, okay. great certificates of compliance go with the deed so uh, i got so you future, that does make future sense. future orders no. are no know, know what's what happened in the future in the past and know what's obligated of them in the future. So, so this will that will clear this from your title. So if someone okay, gotcha. it, they, they won't identify this as an outstanding issue. Okay, great. All right, thank okay. you. Thank you. Anything else before we close? Fairly quick. Not, you know, we haven't had a really long meeting in quite a while, but uh August will be. 
There must be <laughs> view That's why avenue they call it is, Zoom meetings. <laughs> Uh, but View Avenue, has there been a, a, a site visit while I've been away for View yes, Avenue? Yes, there was uh, a few, oh. uh, Beth and Melissa did a site visit last week, but I'll, I'll send out a, another opportunity for that one. Okay. Or you can just go if you want to. David yeah, and, I did, the, David and the... I did the MEPA thing. Oh, oh that's right. Oh. Yes, thank you, Mason. I forgot about that. I got, there. the power went out at City Hall, so I, I was only there for half of it. Um, I but didn't there... realize it wasn't a Zoom meeting, so I'm trying to get in through Zoom. <laughs> kicking me out, and uh, finally I just hit those little blue things on my phone, and finally it was a Teams meeting. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I was able to get to the meeting and watch it on my phone, not on right. my computer. Yeah, so th this was the MEPA consultation for the Smith College's plan to oh. do some oh. bank stabilization and other... Bank oh, restoration. Bank the pond, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Was that, is that recorded? Do you know? Uh, I I don't know. I don't know if they record them. We were stuck on ninety one with trees blown. Oh down. yeah, that 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 they had a lot of bad stuff. The ninety one parking lot. The introduction. <laughs> so All right. Okay. Well, good to see everybody. Same. And we'll hear from Sarah in between now and the 29th of August. And uh, Sarah, I'll probably have some questions because there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, emails that I just saw and haven't read, but they're about View Avenue and they have lots of documents and photographs and so forth. So sure. uh, there's, yeah. there's likely to be uh, some need for advanced thought and consideration and maybe sure. another um, site visit. But. And and that is on the, you know, it wasn't quite ready to be advertised for Conscom yet, but it is on uh, the planning board agenda tonight if anybody wants to tune into that yeah. starting at seven. Okay. All right. Good night, everybody. Good. Thanks, Thank everybody. You.